Hey guys, it's Rory and today I've got a rather long episode of Kerbal Space Program. In this one we're actually sending out our rescue mission all the way out to um, Moho, basically. And uh, as you saw in the last sort of episode or two, obviously there were a couple in between, uh, we actually kind of got a couple of Kerb Kerbals stranded there. So we're sending out a rocket to help get them. Um, so, at the moment we're just launching, same lander as before, uh, we did just let a par uh, Kerbal parachute out, don't worry about that, he's absolutely fine, I guarantee, and uh, basically that was just because we didn't have enough space in the, uh, in the pods at the top, because apparently when you change the crew, it doesn't always actually change the crew, that's something which needs to be changed I think. Um, but yeah, he's fine, don't worry. Uh, he parachuted down safely, we promise. And it was definitely worth it just because of the extraordinary prices of launching a rocket. We would have had to relaunch and that wouldn't have been worth it. So, now uh, we're just circularizing the orbit again. It's kind of standard stuff, it doesn't take uh, too long to do. And at this point we're pretty much ready to make that burn out to Moho again. And this is not easy to get right because you want to make it as efficient as you can. We don't want to end up like last time where we didn't have enough fuel. But hopefully this time it should be a bit better. We've got nuclear engines and uh, those are a lot more efficient. So you know they should actually be able to do this reasonably well. Uh, so there we go, we're starting the burn now. Not everything goes 100% to plan but it does work out in the end so we're, we're okay. Anyway, I've got some other interesting uh, videos coming up, more um, about point twenty four, and I thought that's what I'd talk about a bit more in this video. So the release of point twenty four is probably going to be fairly soon, um, and one of the biggest developments, the reason why point twenty four has probably taken so long, is because I believe anyway it's actually going to be a sixty four bit client. Um, and what that means is that the game runs and can use for, you know, putting it simply, um, the game can use more than about three and a half gigabytes of RAM, which is what it normally uses. Um, it, it doesn't crash when you go over that limit, it'll let you use a lot more, um, you know, more than so much more that it's not even, you know, there's no way that anyone's gonna go over the limit really now. Um, and that basically means that uh, we can have as many mods as we want with as high resolution textures as we want, and, you know, it, it's a good thing basically. Um, so that's a thing that is happening in point 24 and that's probably the main reason it's taken so long. I mean obviously I don't know because I'm not in the Kerbal Space Program headquarters but uh, from the sound of it Harvester has been working on that uh, with, along with some of the other developers to do um, to make that happen. Um, which is really good that's going to mean that we can have you know keep the high resolution textures that you start off with when the game, you know, when when you first install the game, um, and still have as many mods as we want without having to worry about, you know, reducing the size of the game, basically. So things like uh, realism overhaul are going to work better, and you know, it, it's just a good thing. So that that's happening. It should. Um, there is actually a way of doing it at the moment, but it's kind of buggy and it's a bit hacky. It's not perfect. Anyway, you can see we're coming into Moho at the moment, and uh, I left it a little bit late to burn, really, which was a bit of a shame. Um, I'm not going to lie. So we kind of screwed that up a little bit. <laughs> so I think I have to reload the save this time. I'm not sure, though. I might have just gone for it anyway, because we did have quite a lot of fuel. Anyway, uh, you can see the gameplay. So, yeah, we're going to have a 64-bit client, that's one of the main changes, but the other, I think the other reason it's taken so long is that originally for this update, Squad was just going to add budgets, and you can see there, that's the quick load just happened. Um, but I think, I think it was just budgets they were going to add, um, and then they were going to add, or maybe it was just contracts and they were going to add budgets later on, so it was something like that basically, and they've decided to add both of them. Um, which is going to mean that the career mode, I think now, will actually feel like a proper career mode because it's almost going to have that tycoon element to it where you've got to manage your money as well. And that's a really good thing for the game. I think now career mode is going to be at the point where it will make you know a lot more sense to play it than sandbox just because it will actually 
um, you know, it will have at least to some degree all the basic features that it's going to have by the time the game is, you know, finished. All the basic features, I mean, like, you know, obviously they may not be as fully implemented as they can be, they may not be finished, they may not be balanced completely properly yet, but at least they'll be there. Um, I would also like to point out the interesting staging I'm using. Um, basically, I've got the uh, nuclear engines radial mounted, you can see, and then I'm splitting off the tanks as they run out, uh, like you just saw there. To me, it's almost like asparagus staging, but it's just a single line of tanks, which makes it a little bit more efficient, and probably made this mission possible. Uh, you'll see when we get to the end. And yeah, we still go kind of quite a, quite a lot past the periapsis by the time we manage to circularize, but it does happen eventually. And uh, then it's just time to um, get the orbit into a sort of position where we can, I guess, you know, land fairly close at least to where the other kerbals are. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do now is get the orbit circular and sort of get it, um, you know, to the point where it's going to be easy to land from because uh, I don't want to miss and spend a long time transferring kerbals across. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, kind of just winging it a little bit and hoping that we'll be able to do this. So the other thing that point 24, you know, as I was saying, is is adding is the um, is the contracts and the budgets. So basically now you're going to have science points or, you know, research, that kind of thing. You're going to have um, like a bank almost. So you only have a certain amount of funding, which means rockets are going to cost money. And it also that will then bring reusable rockets into play um, because they will obviously be more efficient money-wise. So, you know, it's going to be a way for people who are really good at the game and can make things that are reusable and actually, you know, reuse them. Um, it's going to make those play. it's going to reward those players for doing that, basically. So it's, making a space shuttle hopefully will no longer be something that's completely pointless. It will be something which actually has a legitimate use. So that's um, that's a really sort of exciting thing for me. I, I hope it turns out well. I hope that the uh, the updates are reasonably well balanced, I guess, to start off with, and reasonably full-fledged in terms of their feature set, even if it's not perfectly tweaked yet. Um, so that's uh, that's happening. That will happen. But also the other thing is con uh, contracts. So I presume that for an exact for example, uh, that would be like if uh, let's say you get a contract that says you know send a satellite into orbit, and it's just and you have to actually get and you get something into orbit, and then you get extra money for doing that. You get a, m a monetary reward for that, which is then going to let you fund missions further away. And I. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hope that all the contracts are sort of available at once, if that makes sense. So that, let's say, at the very start of the game, if you're a really good um, pilot and you're really efficient and you can build good uh, rockets with large amounts of Delta V, um, you know, then you could go all the way to the moon and get the big monetary bonus for going to the moon straight away or, you know, r relatively close to the start. That would be interesting. I want to see how they implement that. It's going to be... It's going to be cool, however they do it, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that should add that sort of other dimension to career mode. It's going to make it a little bit more interesting. I don't know how they're going to deal with the problem of, you know, if you've run out of money. Uh, yeah, I have no idea how that's going to work. But I, I can sort of trust Squad by now uh, that they're actually going to do a good job. I mean, they took, they sort of, from the sounds of it anyway, were about to release Point 24, or had it in experimentals at least. And then the feedback they got was, this isn't, you know, you need to add more, you need to make this more full-fledged. So hopefully it will be uh, a lot more full-fledged. Hopefully it will be a, you know, really, really good update for the game. And after this is done, I mean, maybe they'll add some more stuff towards career mode in point 25, but we could even be starting to see the first things for multiplayer in point 26 or point 27, which would be uh, really, really big for the game. Because, I mean, once... Um, there are a lot of people, for example, who like to play games with their friends. I mean, I know I do as well, but just, you know, not Kerbal Space Program yet. Um, and that's going to open up a whole new audience to the game. People who, you know, want to 
do this kind of thing with their friends is like they might have been put off before by the fact that oh I've just got to play it on my own and I know I would almost be a bit uninterested by some games if it wasn't such a good game by that fact so the fact that they're going to be able to add multiplayer is exciting for me I think there's a lot of new things that we can do with that and hopefully I'll maybe be able to do some stuff with you know interaction with channel subscribers and things um, I would also take a, like take a little bit of the time to talk about how the channel's going. Obviously, I've just sort of gotten away from school, so I've been able to record a bit more. You'll start to see more videos coming, hopefully fairly soon. Um, I've also been trying to spend some time thinking about like what kind of tutorial videos I can do, because I still think there's more I can do there, but I'm not 100% sure how I want to go about it. Um, you may know I used to have the uh, the historical tutorial things like you know how to recreate this mission and I think I've still got the Apollo 11 one I think I remade that but I would like to go through and do all of those again I think that would be a good thing to do so that because I, I know those got a lot of they attracted a lot of people towards the channel and then obviously those people come and watch my other videos as well so I think that would be a good thing to do um and that's something I'm definitely looking at doing again now that I have that extra time because they were one of the things where they took a lot more time to do because I had to sort of do a bit a lot more research to do them uh, the other thing I'm thinking of doing is actually uh, I know I've sort of shied away from this before but now that um, when point 24 comes out that'll hopefully help with a lot of the issues I was having with mod crashing, you know, uh, things like that. And if it does, if it's better, then I'm definitely going to look into doing a full realism series. Almost, and I'm, I, th I think if I do that, I'll do it in a similar style to Scott Manley's uh, Interstellar Quest videos, where they're sort of not sped up too much, and I can just talk in great detail about what I'm doing, because it gets a lot more complicated when you have those mod sets installed. And I hope that'll be interesting. So I may do that. That's something I'm thinking of. Another interesting development is uh, there was a, actually a mod installer that's being developed at the moment um, called, and I think it's currently called Cosmos. I don't want to say too much about it. But anyway, um, that's actually, it's going to be renamed because I think there's a mod already out there called Cosmos. But uh, that was posted on the Kerbal Space Program subreddit. And uh, it looks like well, I've, I've actually signed up to sort of do a beta test of it, so I presume uh, it'll be okay for me to maybe show you guys as well. Um, but basically it's a way of installing mods, um, and it can actually directly download and install the mods for you. It doesn't, you don't have to download, you don't have to do anything, you just enter in like a little command. And I presume it'll even just be like drag and drop later on, um, and it will actually install mods for you. So that sounds like a really good... Thing. I mean, it, it's going to, I think the way it works, from what I've heard anyway, is that the person who develops it, or the people who are developing this, um, yeah, the people who are developing it, are basically, uh, they're actually going, going to hand tell the program what, how to install each and individual mod, and then every time anyone does it, it will do it in that way, so that it's it's not it's not like a stupid it's not like a robot that doesn't know the difference between how some mods need to be installed and how others need to be installed. So that should be really good. That looks really promising, and uh, some of the posts I've heard about it or seen about it look really really promising. It's the kind of thing that will definitely make uh, installing mods a lot easier for a lot of people. And I mean, they were saying basically, you know. It, they, they showed an example which was uh, Scott Manley's Interstellar Quest and all the mods required to that you could install with one command typed into this program so you know you literally just had to copy and paste a command from the internet hit enter and you would have installed all the mods correctly in you know in the right order and everything and they would work flawlessly together and you can also then uninstall individual mods if you want to and do stuff like that. It just sounded really, really, really good. Um, so I've signed up for that. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on a test version of that soon. I'm really looking forward to that. That should be interesting. 
Um, because I know one of the things that puts me off installing lots of mods is the fact that if I even screw one thing up or miss one instruction out, it'll, you know, screw up the whole thing, basically. Uh, so, you know, it can be very difficult to then find the problem because, you know, if you install all the mods and then test it and then something doesn't work, you have to start from scratch because the mods quite often have to be installed in a certain order for things like realism overhaul. So yeah, you can see now, by the way, we're burning. This is our main burn back to Kerbin. And uh, it was reasonably good, uh, reasonably efficient. We went a little bit over, but it was absolutely fine. Um, so now what we have to do is try and turn that into an intercept in the orbits and then try and actually time it so that we actually come into Kerbin's orbit. So there we go. Um, I'm going to skip out for you quite a lot of the waiting time that there was. I'm just going to show you the adjustments I had to make. So basically I changed the, I be believe I changed the inclination. I'm not 100% sure though. I basically try and get it to be a little bit better, a little bit closer, um, so that we can actually get the intercept. And then we basically have to wait until Kerbin comes close to us. So it takes us a few orbits, but I'm going to miss that bit out. There we go. And you can see there we've just burned to actually adjust it and try and get the closest intercept that we can. And we want to get it so close that we don't have to do any burning when we get to Kerbin. And you can see we literally have, I think, 30 to 40 units of uh, fuel left. So it was a close one. Anyway, now I know I have enough fuel to do this, so I quick save and then just try burning in each and every direction until I get the orbit as close as it can be, because if you burn prograde, retrograde, normal, anti-normal, and oh, what's the other one, radial, and the other opposite of that, um, then eventually you'll get the closest orbit you can, because you'll just see how they increase or decrease, and you get each one, you know, you burn each way until the orbit gets as low as it possibly can. And there we go, we get an intercept. Uh, so it's going to be quite a hot re-entry, but it doesn't really matter. We've got all the Kerbals with us uh, that we rescued, so we're doing pretty well so far. And we've got parachutes as well, so I just decided to burn off the last of the fuel that was in there just so the landing goes a bit more smoothly. And then deploy the parachutes. Sorry, it's in the dark, by the way. Not much I could do about that one. Um, I did put the lights on, and yeah, we hit the ground a little bit hard because of how heavy this thing is, but it's okay. So I hope you liked the video guys, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Quite a long one, but as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.